One day, a late-night phone call rang in the apartment of a happy family. The father answered the call and heard the terrible news. Hello, is this Greg? Your car got into an accident. The girl who was driving it has died. The man said some other words, but Greg couldn't hear them anymore. His eldest daughter, Amelia, was driving his car. They say that before a person dies, their whole life flashes before their eyes. That's probably true. Greg didn't die after hearing the news, but Amelia's whole life flashed before his eyes. The man remembered all 24 years of her life, from the moment he had picked up the envelope with the pink bow from the maternity hospital until this morning, when he gave her the keys. Warning the girl, as always, be careful, don't stop on the highway and don't give anyone a ride, and don't stare at young guys. Amelia laughed, kissed Daddy on the cheek, and left. As it turned out, she left forever. The voice that had announced the terrible news continued to say something, but Greg heard nothing. He lowered his hand with the phone, which felt very heavy. His wife approached him, realizing that something terrible had happened. Greg, what happened? Valerie asked in a trembling voice. She took the phone from her husband's hands, brought it to her ear, and suddenly said quietly, a body identification? What are you talking about? Whose body? No, please, no. Their dog, Bella, howled longingly. It seems that she knew everything ahead of time, having sensed the trouble. After all, her real and only owner was Amelia. She was the one who once insisted on buying this dog. She dreamed of a husky since childhood, and one day when she saw such a dog on the street, she said, Mom, Dad, I really want a husky. You can't imagine how beautiful huskies are. They have blue eyes and fluffy fur. Let's buy a husky, please. The parents loved their daughters, Amelia and Emma, but they had not planned to buy such a big and fluffy dog. After all, they were living in a dormitory at the time. Greg and Valerie moved from a small town. When they got married, they tried to rent an apartment, but then they realized that it wasn't the best option. And it wasn't even about money. It wasn't the fact that the landlords were demanding as much for a tiny old apartment as for a room in a fancy hotel. The problem was that when Greg and Valerie got used to the tiny apartment and got acquainted with the neighbors, the landlords had some sort of force majeure and demanded the couple move out immediately. And it happened several times. They could tolerate it when there were just the two of them. But when Valerie got pregnant, they realized they couldn't live like that anymore. They didn't want to constantly move from one apartment to another with the baby. And they didn't have enough money to buy an apartment because they were spending all the money they made on rent and food. So the couple decided to move into a small municipal dormitory. In general, the dormitory was good. After Emma was born, they were even provided with a bigger room. But they couldn't get a dog. There was a shared corridor, a shared kitchen, and all the neighbors had children. So the parents explained to their daughters that until they bought their own apartment, the dream of a husky would have to be postponed. While we are living in the dormitory, you can research information about this breed, how we should take care of such a dog and what we should feed it, so that when we bought it, we would know how to train it and how to take care of it. Amelia immediately started researching all the information about huskies. She has always been a responsible and serious girl. And very soon, she learned a lot of information about the dogs, probably more than the sinologists. But her parents bought the apartment only when Amelia had already graduated from high school and entered college. But she didn't forget about her dream. As soon as they moved into their own apartment, the girl immediately asked, Can I have a dog now? My husky with blue eyes is waiting for me somewhere. We need to at least arrange the furniture and buy curtains, Mom said irritably. You're a grown-up girl. You're 17. Why are you still dreaming about dogs? You'd better help me clean the apartment. Sweetie, you'll have a dog soon. My mom and I are already preparing a gift for you, Greg whispered to his daughter. And for Christmas, the parents did buy a dog for the girls. It's exactly the dog I've been dreaming of, a happy Amelia said, holding back tears. Mom, Dad, how could you guess? Honey, we've been hearing about this breed for years. You've told us everything about your dream dog, even about the pink spot on its nose. The sisters snatched the puppy out of each other's hands, kissing and hugging their new friend. But her tail isn't fluffy. A husky is supposed to have a fluffy tail, Emma said in surprise. That's because she's still a puppy. When she grows up, she'll have a fluffy tail too, 
Our dog will have the fluffiest tail ever, Amelia reassured her sister. We need to choose a name for her, maybe Princess? No, that's too long and cliché. The name of our favorite cartoon character is Bella. Why don't we call her Bella? Sounds great. And may our Bella be as brave and loyal as that girl from the cartoon. Bella, come here. But the puppy didn't know her name yet and didn't respond to it. But the little dog immediately chose her main owner. She almost never left Amelia's side. The whole family treated Bella well and loved her. But Amelia became the main dog's teacher. Everyone admired her responsible attitude. From the first days, she took care of the dog's nutrition. She trained the dog, washed her, and combed her fur. When Bella turned one year old, she was already such a smart and beautiful dog that all the neighbors admired her. It was a pleasure to watch the dog walk beside her owner, wagging her fluffy tail. Well-groomed and perfectly obedient, Bella knew the commands and looked at her owner with clever blue eyes. Sometimes it even seemed that the dog and the girl communicated with each other in a language only two of them knew. In addition, Amelia took Bella to a training site where a sinologist trained the dog and owners of other dogs shared the secrets of training their pets. One day while walking with Bella, the girl fell and badly hurt her leg with some rusty wire. Amelia managed to stop the bleeding, but they decided to call an ambulance. While Amelia waited for the doctor, Bella didn't leave her owner's side. The doctors had to stitch the wound and make a bandage. There was nothing dangerous in such an injury, but the girl got a scar on her leg. For several days, Bella had to walk with Amelia's parents and Emma. Bella obeyed them, but she didn't enjoy walking without her dear Amelia. Amelia, sweetie, you've spoiled the dog, Greg scolded her sometimes. When you get married and move away, leaving Bella to us, how are we supposed to handle this troublemaking dog? I will never leave Bella, Amelia replied indignantly. Even if I get married, I will warn my fiancé that I have a dog and the dog will live with us. And how are you going to go on your wedding trip, together with Bella? I don't think leaving Bella with you for just one week is a problem. Or maybe I won't even have a wedding trip. This conversation had taken place about a year before the tragedy, and no one had any premonitions. But the girl was right. She never got married and never went on a wedding trip. When Amelia said she wanted to get her driver's license, her parents were against it. There's no need for a girl to drive. I don't have a driver's license and I don't feel any inconvenience, Valerie said. Come on, Mom, everyone has a driver's license now. Nowadays, it's a shame not to have a driver's license. And what are you going to do with them? You don't have a car and we won't be able to buy one for you anytime soon. I can drive Daddy's car from time to time, Amelia said confidently, and then I'll start working and buy my own car. Her argument seemed quite logical to Greg. Indeed, it would be convenient if someone else in the family had a driver's license. So when Amelia turned 20, she went to driving school and passed all the exams. Her father had taught her how to drive even before driving school. He knew that his daughter had become a responsibly and careful driver. Besides, she took Daddy's car not just to drive around the city, but in really important situations. So on that fateful day when Amelia said she needed to give a ride to her friend whose father was ill, no one was worried except Bella. The dog was always sad when her owner went somewhere without her. But that day, a few hours after Amelia left, the dog began to behave strangely. She kept pacing back and forth and then went to the front door and started scratching it. Emma, take Bella out for a walk. I'm busy right now, Valerie shouted from the kitchen. I'm actually preparing for my exams the younger daughter said grudgingly. Emma was already 21 and was finishing university. Her mother realized that exams were a big deal and I decided to take Bella for a walk herself. Why are you acting like this? You wanted us to buy you a dog too and now what? She doesn't obey me. If I lose her outside, it will be your fault. Daddy will come home from work soon. He'll take her for a walk. Bella can't wait for Daddy to come home from work. Besides, she's very anxious today. She always behaves like this when Amelia isn't home. Outside, Bella became even more anxious. She wouldn't obey Valerie and tried to run away somewhere. But then Greg came around the corner and Bella whined and ran toward him. Calm down, Bella. Greg's already home. Amelia will also be home soon, Valerie said. Amelia isn't home yet, the father asked. Not yet. She's probably with her friend. Her father's sick, so maybe they needed some help. But in the evening... 
they received that fateful call from a policeman. There was no need to identify Amelia's body. The car got into an accident on the most dangerous part of the road. Knocking down a guardrail, the car fell off a cliff and burst into flames. The remains of the girl's body were buried in a closed coffin. My sweet little girl, why can't I look at you one last time? Why can't I hold your hand? The pale mother said as she hugged the coffin. Her husband and youngest daughter were also very upset, but now they had to worry about Valerie's condition. They were afraid of losing her too. Sometimes it seemed that mom might die soon. They had to call an ambulance every day, but her condition didn't change. After the funeral, the poor woman just wouldn't get out of bed. No, she was not paralyzed. She just didn't want to live in a world without her dear Amelia. Emma, who had recently turned 21, took care of all the household chores. The girl also had to take care of her mother, almost forcing her to eat, take her medicine, get out of bed, and walk around the room. Mom, it's really hard for all of us to live without Amelia, but we have to live for each other. Daddy and I need you. I love you, my dear. I need you too, but I can't live like this. I don't know how to live without Amelia. Greg worked very hard to distract himself and stop thinking about his daughter's death. He also realized that he needed to help his wife survive this tragedy. He spent all his free time at Valerie's bedside, talking to her about their sweet girl. They talked about Amelia's entire life from birth, her first smile, first step, first word. At first, it seemed to him that these conversations only upset the poor woman even more. But no, Valerie gradually started talking, crying, and even getting out of bed. And what happened to Bella? Everyone almost forgot about the dog because of the tragedy. It seemed as if Bella understood how much everyone was suffering, so she didn't bother anyone. The dog simply didn't want to live anymore. Emma took her out for a walk, but it was hard to recognize the previously beautiful doggo. Bella had lost a lot of weight, her fur was no longer shiny, her tail hung lifelessly, and her blue eyes were constantly full of tears. Poor dog. She can't tell what she feels, but it's obvious that she is suffering a lot. That's the dog's loyalty, the neighbors whispered. At home, the dog was always lying lifelessly by Amelia's bedside, refusing water and food. Even Valerie began to come to her senses. The woman got out of bed, took a shower, and sometimes even did something in the kitchen. However, when she started to do something, she would get exhausted very quickly. Every little thing reminded her of Amelia. Sometimes she would sit in a chair for hours, holding a book or a handkerchief or her daughter's cup as if she were under hypnosis. And sometimes she would sit down next to Bella and talk to her about Amelia. I know how much you suffer without Amelia. I suffer too, and I don't know how to live without her. Sometimes I hear her voice, her footsteps, smell her scent, and then I realize she's gone. Bella whined softly and licked Valerie's hands, feeling that this tragedy had brought them together. A year passed after Amelia's death. The pain had never gone away, but life went on. Valerie's hair turned gray. She aged a lot but tried to suppress her emotions. The family even began to celebrate holidays again although sometimes these holidays were quiet and joyless. And sometimes when Valerie set the table for four persons out of habit, the family realized that now there were only three of them, and tears came to everyone's eyes. The tears also came at the sight of Amelia's pet, for the dog began to look even worse. Emma was even ashamed to take the dog outside. Bella lost a lot of weight, and she hardly ate. At home, the dog would just lie on the floor staring somewhere. Emma couldn't bear to see the dog in that condition any longer and decided to call a vet. I can't watch the dog suffer. Maybe it's better to euthanize her. Otherwise, Bella will starve to death anyway, Emma said. Are you going to kill your sister's dog? Are you insane? Don't you remember how much Amelia loved Bella? What if Amelia comes back? What are you going to tell her? Valerie became very angry, frightening both her daughter and her husband. It seemed to Emma that her mom had lost her mind. What does that mean that Amelia's coming back? Amelia's dead. Had mom stopped realizing that? Greg got worried too, but both Greg and Emma said nothing to Valerie, hoping that she would come to her senses over time. But they decided to call the vet anyway. The vet examined the dog, listened to the owner's explanations and said, Physically, your dog is healthy but severely malnourished. 
but her mental state is terrible. You have to force her to eat, take her outside, walk with her as long as you can, distract her. If you don't manage to change her behavior, the animal will simply die. It's a young and healthy dog. Do everything possible to bring her back to normal life. But the truth was that Bella didn't want to live, and she was only getting worse. Greg couldn't take it anymore and said, I can't just watch a dog dying slowly. There are no good vets in our town, but we can go to a big city and get a serious examination there. Maybe there are some animal psychologists there. Perhaps they can give us some advice. This is Amelia's dog, and we have to do everything we can to make sure she survives. How are we going to take her to the city, Daddy? We don't have a car anymore, and they won't let us on the train with a dog. We'll pay for the whole compartment. Will you go? I can go alone, but I suggest you go too, to get away from the daily routine. Eventually, they went to the city together by train. Bella was in a bad condition. She didn't resist at all. She just walked beside her owners, quietly entered the train, lay down on the floor of the train compartment, and fell asleep. They reached their destination and got into a cab to go to the vet. The driver was shocked at how the dog looked. Greg briefly explained what had happened to Bella. Yes, dogs are very loyal to their owners. We have a good veterinary clinic. Maybe you can get some help there. My mother-in-law also has a dog. One day, her dog got seriously ill. We wanted to euthanize the doggo, but we didn't dare. We took her to this clinic. They recommended a sinologist and a pet psychologist and prescribed medicine. It helped. Now the dog is alive and well, but we had to pay a lot of money. This story gave the family hope, and they excitedly entered the veterinary clinic, but soon realized they had come in vain. The doctors examined Bella, took tests, and repeated the same diagnosis they had been told at home. The dog is healthy, just missing her owner. Well, maybe you can prescribe some pills or injections. I mean, the dog is dying, Greg pleaded. I'll prescribe some medicine, but it's only vitamins and tranquilizers. Unfortunately, there's no cure for longing. There's nothing we can do about it. She'll either come to her senses or die. I'd suggest you euthanize her, but that's a last resort. No, that's out of the question. We are not going to kill Bella, all the family members said at once. They left the clinic with no answer as to how to solve this problem. Yes, the doctor prescribed them some medication, but it probably won't help. The only thing left was to go back home and wait for the inevitable death of the dog. Everyone's mood was depressed, and they had to wait five hours for the train that would take them home. The train will arrive in five hours. Let's relax on a bench somewhere. Bella certainly won't get worse in the fresh air. I hope she doesn't die on the way home, Emma said gloomily. Fortunately, the weather's nice today, and I also noticed a little park ahead. And I there was an ice cream truck at the entrance to the park. Greg bought four portions, one for Bella. Maybe at least the ice cream would cheer her up. But when he looked around, he didn't see the dog. Where's Bella? Where did she go? Valerie and Emma began to look around, not understanding how their dog could have run away. After all, she was already weak and could hardly walk. There's your dog, take her away before she bites someone, one of the passers-by shouted. They hurried toward the crowd and were amazed to see Bella. It was still the same skinny dog, but now she looked full of energy. She was walking resolutely towards a young girl standing with her back to everyone, next to a well-dressed, smiling man. When the dog approached the girl, she howled happily and snuggled against the legs of the unfamiliar girl. What's wrong with her? Emma wondered and rushed over to the dog. Are you not feeding your dog at all? It seems like your pet has rabies. Get your dog out of here. Someone should call the police. People were complaining. Emma approached the dog, grabbed her by the collar, and tried to pull her aside. But Bella wasn't going to move away from that girl. The girl turned around, and Emma froze in shock, for it was Amelia. At that moment, Greg and Valerie approached them. Valerie saw the stranger's face and lost consciousness and Bella continued to snuggle at the feet of the girl, who looked calm and even stroked the dog. But she clearly didn't recognize anyone, but the man didn't like the situation. Zoe, don't touch the dog. I think it's sick. Let's get out of here. What is going on here? Where did this crazy family with a dog come from? Valeria woke up, reached for the girl, and said, Amelia, my girl, my daughter. The girl, whom her husband called Zoe, was stroking the dog in confusion. 
She took some food out of her bag, offered it to Bella, and the dog ate it with pleasure. The girl was not afraid, but she looked at the dog carefully and muttered, Her blue eyes are so beautiful, and the pink spot on her nose. The girl paid no attention to her husband, who begged her, Darling, don't touch this animal. The dog could be dangerous. You have to be careful. You're pregnant. Oh my goodness, get your dog away from her. Emma couldn't stop looking at the girl who looked exactly like her dead sister. Only the hair color was different. Amelia preferred to bleach her hair, and this girl's hair was dark. But then the man said he would call the police. Emma took her eyes off the girl and said to the man, I'm sorry, it's just that your wife looks a lot like my sister who died in a car accident. She was the owner of this dog, that's why the dog has such a reaction. Hey, you don't understand anything about dogs, an elderly man who was watching the situation said. Dogs don't recognize their owners by face, they recognize them by smell and some other signs, and they are never wrong. I'm a sinologist, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Suddenly, the girl who was looking at the dog rubbed her forehead, squatted down in front of the dog, hugged the dog, exhaled, and said, Oh, Bella. Now there was no more doubt. No one called the dog by name in front of the girl, which meant that she remembered Bella's name. Valerie was crying quietly in her husband's arms, and Greg was wiping away his tears, too. Amelia, you really don't recognize us? The father asked. Are you guys completely crazy? The husband of the woman who looked a lot like Amelia was angry. And are you going to approach every girl who looks like your daughter and say that's your daughter? No, not every girl. But the dog recognized her. We didn't even see her face before we approached you. Besides, Amelia recognized her dog too. You saw it. The father persuaded. Valerie was crying and calling for her daughter but suddenly the police arrived. What's going on? Whose dog is that? It's the dog of these crazy people. Their dog almost bit my pregnant wife, and these people recognize their dead daughter and every passing girl. Take them somewhere before they hurt anyone. Zoe's husband was indignant. And then Emma exclaimed, That's really my sister. Mom, Dad, look, she has a scar on her leg. That very scar, remember? We even still have the medical records that confirm Amelia's wound was stitched up. We need to do a DNA test. It's Amelia. I'm sure of it. Valerie and Greg were hugging the girl, while the police officers and Zoe's husband were standing in total confusion. Amelia was trying to remember something, but couldn't. The policeman decided to take everyone to the police station and send the pregnant girl to the hospital. At the police station, they tried to understand what had happened in the park. Amelia's family was too excited and confused, so the husband of the pregnant girl was the first to start explaining everything. My pregnant wife was attacked by a strange-looking dog in the park. You can see that the animal is not healthy. The dog's strange owners started telling some story about their dead daughter, who had been resurrected in the person of my wife, and they started bothering my wife, looking for some scars on her body, which frightened her a lot. That's why she went to the hospital. But are you sure your wife isn't their daughter? What are you talking about? We have been married for a long time. My wife's name is Zoe, not Amelia. I just called my friend. He attended our wedding. He will come to the police station soon and confirm my words. I sympathize with these people. They lost their daughter and probably went crazy with grief. But I'm not going to let them bother my pregnant wife. Or maybe they're just criminals. And they found out that I am a successful man. I have money. So they decided to blackmail me through my wife. But your wife really looked confused. I'm sure you'd be confused too if people with a dog approached you and claimed you were their son. I told you my wife is pregnant, and she doesn't feel well sometimes. And, yes, she has memory problems, it's mentioned in her medical records. But it has nothing to do with this stupid situation. Do you think she died, was buried, then resurrected, and doesn't remember anything about it? Besides, Zoe and I got married before their daughter died. I understand, but still, we need to get to the bottom of this. These people don't seem crazy. Do you think normal people walk rabid dogs and look for their dead relatives in parks? Anyway, you can start investigating, but please don't bother my wife. She's pregnant. Stress is not a good thing for her. I hope that now she will calm down in the hospital and forget about this situation. How serious are her memory problems? 
It's nothing serious. She remembers and realizes everything that's going on. It's just that she can't remember some of the events of her past. For example, she and I lived abroad for a year after we got married, but she doesn't remember it. But I think it's okay. A lot of people forget important dates and events, right? But I can prove my every word if necessary. At the same time, another investigator was questioning Greg's family in another room. Since the women were extremely nervous, Greg explained the whole situation. You see, our daughter Amelia died a year ago in a car accident. I mean, we were told that she died. We didn't even see the body. Police officers told us that everything was burned down there. Not even any clothes left. Nothing at all. But there were remains of a body in my car, and we were sure it was Amelia. So we buried her in a closed coffin. We'd still think our daughter was dead if it weren't for today's encounter. But what makes you sure it's your daughter? After all, there are so many similar girls around. I agree, but the dog recognized her. She recognized her even before I saw this girl's face. And then Amelia called the dog by name. How could that be? And she has the same scar on her leg as Amelia. Too much of a coincidence, don't you think? You probably think we're crazy. But let's just do a DNA test. It'll show the truth. But even without a DNA test, I know for sure. It's our daughter, our dear Amelia. You're right, but her husband Anthony is against the DNA test, as he wants to protect her from unnecessary stress. Besides, he says he can prove every word he says. If he's right, what is he afraid of? Believe me, we're not going to separate them. Let them live together. Let her name be Zoe, or any other name. But the main thing is that we know she's alive. You see, for a whole year we didn't live, we existed. We were sure Amelia was dead and suddenly we met her in the park. At that moment, Valerie's phone rang. She answered the call and cried out in joy, for she heard her daughter's voice. Mom, it's me, Amelia. I love you and Daddy, and Emma. Bella helped me get my memory back. Where is she? Where is my dog? Amelia, my sweet girl, we are at the police station now, and Bella is here too. We will come to you soon. We will be together again. The woman's eyes were filled with tears. Greg, Emma, everything is fine. She remembered everything. Thank you, officer. It's all over now. Amelia remembered everything. No tests needed. Mom? Amelia called out. Can you come to me now? I'm in the hospital right now, but I'm fine. And where is Anthony? Is he at the police station too? Who is Anthony, your husband? He's here too. At this time, Anthony came out of the investigator's room. Valeria couldn't help herself and hugged her new relative. Anthony, Amelia remembered everything. She remembered us. Wait, but how did this happen? Did you kidnap her? You kidnapped her. Bastard. Uh now she was ready to attack the man she had been hugging a second ago. What on earth is going on here? What did my wife remember? Who did I kidnap? The confused man shouted. Look, Anthony, we need to figure everything out, but only together with Amelia. Let's go to Amelia, or Zoe, and talk, Greg said. My wife shouldn't be stressed out, Anthony mumbled. She's expecting a baby, my baby. Please go away, and don't torture her. Zoe is my wife. She will stay with me. Yes, of course she will be with you, but Amelia is our daughter. You can call her Zoe, love her. Love the baby that will be born. But let us be there for our daughter too. Okay, let's go pick up Zoe together and then go home. There we can talk. Anthony turned to the confused investigator and said, I apologize for bothering you for no reason. We'll handle this on our own. Everything is fine. Everything is fine, seriously? Valeria shouted. We buried someone's body and were sure it was Amelia. Meanwhile, this man kidnapped our daughter and erased her memory. Officer, arrest him. We suffered for an entire year. I almost died of grief. Wait, but then whose body did you bury? The investigator asked in confusion. So the investigation is still necessary. I hope you can figure it all out, Greg said. Calm down, Valerie. We don't need to blame Anthony right now. We need to talk to our daughter. The family went to the hospital where they finally hugged their dear Amelia. Not only the family cried but also the hospital staff. Anthony drove his wife and new relatives home. 
On the way, they hardly spoke, deciding to postpone the conversation until they arrived home. Amelia asked her husband to stop at the pet store to buy food for her dog. My poor Bella, she has lost so much weight and her fur looks so bad. Emma, what have you been feeding her? Amelia, we have so much to tell you. We came to this city with the hope of curing Bella. She's hardly eaten anything since that car accident. All she did was lie by your bedside and howl all the time. That's okay. We'll fix that. Soon, Bella will be the most beautiful dog again. Once home, Amelia immediately poured food and water into Bella's bowl. The dog ate it all quickly and signaled that she wanted some more food. Ah. Wait, Bella, you've been starving for too long. You can't have too much food at once. Drink some water and lie down next to me. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. The family sat down at the big table. Bella obediently lay down by her owner's chair and rested her muzzle on her foot. Are you guarding me? Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere now. Amelia, sweetie, tell us how it all happened, Greg asked. I'm sorry, it's probably my fault, but I didn't mean to do anything wrong, Anthony said. But his wife stopped him. Wait, Anthony, let me begin the story. You probably remember, that day I drove my friend to her father's house. Amelia turned to her parents. I took Tiffany to a small town. Her father was really sick there. I stayed there for a while and was about to go home. It was already getting dark outside. Tiffany offered me to spend the night at their house, but since I didn't warn you, I decided to drive home. Yeah, Tiffany told us she cried at the funeral, blamed herself. She said her daddy had recovered, but Amelia had died. At my funeral, Amelia whispered, and there's a grave? Let's not talk about it right now, Mom said. Go on with your story. What happened next? I headed home when it was already dark outside. There were hardly any cars on the road. And I saw a girl by the side of the road. Yeah, Dad. I remember you always told me never to give rides to strangers. I didn't listen to you. I felt sorry for her because it was already evening and it was very cold outside. So I stopped and offered her a ride. She was an ordinary girl, about 20 years old. However... She seemed to me untidy and very nervous. I thought, what if she was addicted to drugs? Apparently she was. As we were driving down the road, she started crying abruptly. I asked her what was wrong, and she started to tell me that her boyfriend had broken up with her, and she felt really bad. I tried to calm her down, but she kept screaming that she didn't want to live without him. She told me that she had already tried to poison herself with pills and cut her veins, but nothing worked. The doctors always saved her. I was a little scared by her story and tried to calm her down. I told her that she was still a young girl and would definitely find her happiness. But she suddenly shouted, Are you happy? Well then why don't we just go to the same grave? Just imagine, two young girls, but one is happy and the other is not. She grabbed the steering wheel and twisted it. The car spun on the road, I couldn't do anything. The car fell off the road into a cliff. I don't remember anything else. So we buried that girl instead of you, and it turns out I was crying over the grave of my daughter's killer. Valerie was horrified. Mom, I'm alive. Anthony, tell us what happened next. Amelia gestured to her husband. I was on my way home from a business meeting that day. When I saw someone lying on the road, I decided to stop. There was an unconscious girl covered in blood. At first I thought she was hit by a car, but managed to jump aside, which is why she survived. I picked her up, put her in the car, and took her to the hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, the doctor started asking me about her. Who was this girl? Where did I find her? I realized that if I told the truth, the doctor would call the police, an investigation would begin, and I might even be accused of hitting her with my car. I just didn't have time for an investigation, so I lied. I said that this was my wife, Zoe, and she fell down the stairs at our house. I asked them to examine her to make sure she was okay. Suddenly, Zoe woke up and unexpectedly confirmed that she was really my wife and she had accidentally fallen down the stairs at home. Her injuries didn't seem to be very serious, or rather, that's what it seemed to me at the hospital. They treated her wounds, bandaged her up, and let her go home. We got in the car and I asked her where to take her and what's her name. At that moment, I realized she didn't remember anything not even her name. And you decided to take advantage of her helpless state, a very noble act, 
Valerie said, pursing her lips. Come on, Mom, everything is fine, right? Amelia said pleadingly. Everything is fine. Everything is fine, except that we all nearly died of grief. I'm sorry, Valerie, Anthony said. Yes, I probably did a bad thing, but I didn't intend to take advantage of her helpless state. Yes, I really liked Zoe, I mean Amelia, but I didn't mean any harm. I brought her home and called my friend. He's a very good doctor. He came right away, examined her, and said that the girl had a head injury. That's probably what caused the memory loss. He said only time could cure it. As you can see, he was right. And don't get me wrong, I've been trying to find out who she is and what happened. I found some news about that car accident on the internet. The driver, a young girl, was killed, and there were no other victims. I thought it was the car that hit Zoe, and that's why the car overturned on the road. But you haven't even tried to find out anything about Amelia, who she is, where she's from, Valerie muttered. You picked her up like a stray cat, gave her a name, and told her to live in your house. Mom, please don't say that, at least listen to him, Amelia begged. Please listen to me, Anthony shouted. I've been trying to find out who she is. I've been looking for some information on the internet. Maybe someone was looking for a girl with similar features, but I haven't found anything. Not a single person has been looking for her. How on earth could we look for her if we thought she was dead? But Anthony, you're a grown, intelligent man. What were you thinking? Amelia couldn't have just appeared out of nowhere. She could have been married, and she could have had a child and parents. Have you thought about that? That's what I'm saying. I've thought about it. I traveled around the nearest small towns, asking the locals if the girl was missing there. I have friends in the police department, and I asked them too. But no one was looking for a young girl. Not even the girl who died? Wasn't anyone looking for the girl we buried? Valerie asked. Emma silently listened to her sister's story and she wasn't as outraged by Anthony's act as Valerie was. Maybe someone was looking for her. The police officer showed me several pictures of missing girls, but there was no one who looked like Zoe. <laughs> and you happily continued to lie to Amelia, calling her your wife, Valerie said. Zoe can confirm that I didn't even try to force her to live with me. Yes, I fell in love with her, and I couldn't imagine life without this girl anymore, but... I was patiently waiting for her to reciprocate. Yes, Mom, it's true. Anthony lied to me, but I'm not mad at him. He saved me and tried to find my family, and he just didn't know anything about you. I really didn't remember anything at all at the time. Yeah, Zoe had a total checkup at a good private clinic, but the doctor said we shouldn't force her to remember anything. It could damage her brain. Besides, we didn't know what her past was like. And I'll be honest with you, I was afraid that Zoe would leave me. I needed her and I cared about her, you know? That's why I made up that legend. I told everyone that we've been married for a long time and we love each other. How on earth could you believe that there was nothing left of your past happy life, not even pictures, Amelia? Emma said in surprise. I told her that we lived abroad for a year and on our way back home, our luggage was stolen at the airport and all the papers were there. Then my friends helped to issue a passport for Zoe and a marriage certificate and Zoe never even had any suspicion during this year. Honestly, I didn't want her to remember her past anymore, especially after we'd become real husband and wife. It was the happiest year of my life, and now we're expecting a baby, and I don't care if she's Zoe or Amelia as long as she is with me. Okay, we've learned the truth. Let's not blame anyone. We can't change the situation anyway, right? Greg said firmly. Now we have to think about how to move on with our lives so we don't do anything even more stupid. Amelia has been living with false documents for a year. I hope she won't get in any trouble for that. I mean, she didn't even realize it. Now we need to get your identity back, or do you plan to continue living under someone else's name without your past? No, of course not. I want my past back. Anthony, do you think you'll get in trouble for making a fake passport? I don't know. I don't think I committed a crime. But you definitely need to get your identity back and get all your documents restored but we need to think about how we're going to live now. Your parents live in another city and you live here with me now. Amelia has to go home. She shouldn't live with a man who committed such a despicable act, Valerie said angrily. Mom, what on earth are you talking about? What despicable act did he commit? Amelia uttered, holding back tears. Don't you realize it? He saved you, healed you, and fell in love with you? Sounds romantic. 
but he hid who you really are from everyone, including you. If it hadn't been for Bella, we would never have known you were alive. And you wouldn't even know your name, you'd just be some Zoe without a past. Mom, but everything's good now. Everything's good just for now, but nothing lasts forever. Now you are happy, you love each other, but what will you have in a year, in five years? What if he falls in love with someone else? Why do you say that, Valerie? Anthony said indignantly. You'd better shut up. Despicable people like you are capable of anything. What if you fell out of love with her and kicked Zoe out of the house? You'd tell her that Zoe didn't exist and your marriage was null and void. And then Amelia would have nothing left, not even relatives. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to build a normal relationship with my mother-in-law. Anthony stood up and paced nervously around the room. I am not your mother-in-law. Zoe's mom is your mother-in-law. My daughter's name is Amelia, and my daughter is not your wife. The fact that you made a fake passport and marriage certificate for her doesn't mean anything. The woman you fell in love with doesn't exist. Zoe doesn't exist. I could understand if a criminal or an anarchist did it, but you're a serious man. Or do you have a fake passport too? Emma was already laughing at her mom's words. Greg, on the other hand, got angry and said, Valerie, stop it. I'm afraid you're about to accuse him of being a spy. You're absolutely right about a lot of things. But the further you go in your reasoning, the more bizarre stories you make up. Look at Amelia. She's already pale, and Anthony, too. Only Emma laughs, though I don't see anything funny in this situation. The situation is very serious, but Mom has taken it to the point of absurdity, so it's funny to me. Emma, it's not funny. Amelia, you need to go home and recover your identity. Probably when you become Amelia again, Anthony will want to marry you again. But let's talk about that later. Amelia looked at her mom and husband in confusion, then at her dad, and then at her mom again. She didn't know what she should do in this situation. Isn't it possible to recover documents here? She asked weakly. I think it's possible, Anthony exclaimed. Valerie, please try to understand. Amelia is expecting our baby. She doesn't need any unnecessary stress right now. And, and while she's with you, you'll come up with some sneaky plan to keep us away from her again. You know, Mom, Emma said, just imagine how many people will frighten when we get home with Amelia. I mean, everyone knows about that accident. That's something that concerns me the least. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hiding my daughter. But I think we need to prepare everyone for it somehow. Emma, you spend all your time on social media. You've probably already told everyone. I've only told Natalie so far. Well, Natalie will tell Maria and Alex, and they will tell Daisy, Michael, and Gordon. By the time we get home, everyone will already be greeting us at the train station with flowers, and no one will be scared of Amelia. I don't want anyone to meet me at the train station, a frustrated Amelia said. Mom, can I stay with Anthony and let Bella stay with me? I get it so you don't need Mom anymore, Valerie said grumpily. Valerie, please calm down. All right, we'll restore the documents. But to do that, Amelia must come to our town and confirm that she is really alive, Greg said confidently. I can take care of restoring the documents, Anthony said. I'm sorry, but after everything you've done, I can't trust you. I'll take care of her passport myself, but we still haven't discussed how we're going to live now. Okay, Anthony said firmly. You can blame me and even hate me. I deserve it. Greg, take care of her passport as soon as possible. If you need help with that, I'll do everything I can. And when it's done, Zoe, I mean Amelia, and I will get married. Right, dear? Of course, I mean you and I are already husband and wife, Amelia replied tiredly. I realize that you found your daughter and you don't want to part with her. But neither do I want to lose my beloved wife, nor the baby that will be born in six months. We don't give a damn what you want, Valerie uttered, but Greg stopped her with a gesture. I don't think Amelia wants to be a single mom either, Greg said. I don't want to break up with Anthony, Amelia exclaimed, and tears welled up in her eyes. At that moment, the girl finally realized her situation. She found her parents and sister, but they live in different cities. And even though her hometown isn't that far from here, she wished she could see her family every day after such a long separation. I suggest the following solution. I'll buy you an apartment in our city. We will find a suitable apartment in our neighborhood. Cool, Emma said cheerfully. 
No way, we don't want anything from you. Valerie grinned. I knew you would say that, but I don't have any other solution. But if you have better options, I'm ready to listen to you. Valerie was ready to attack Anthony again, but her husband stopped her. Valerie, stop seeing a catch in everything. Anthony's just trying to find a reasonable solution. After all, we've been wanting to move to this city for a long time. We already have enough money, besides we can sell our apartment. I mean, we've already realized we can't live away from Amelia after everything that's happened. Dad, Mom, accept this offer, Amelia pleaded. At least try to believe Anthony. He is a very decent man. I would never fall in love with a bad person. Please, let's do the right thing. I mean, we can finally be happy. Please, let's not do anything stupid. Mom, please think about our family. We finally found Amelia. She's happy, and we can be happy too. Isn't that what you wanted? Let's not do anything stupid, and let's not try to ruin Amelia's family. She is expecting a baby with a man who truly loves her. Emma was upset. She didn't understand why her mom was so stubborn. But Valerie finally sighed tiredly and said, Yes, you're right, Emma. I don't know why I said that, but I just imagined that we had to leave Amelia, and my heart sank. I don't want to go to the town where we buried Amelia. I don't want to go to the place where the grave with the body of an unknown girl and Amelia's picture is located. I'm afraid I'll feel like everything that happened today was just a dream. She covered her face with her palms and lowered her head. No, Mom, it's not a dream. I'm with you and I'll always be here for you. And I don't want to see that grave either. I'm alive, and I love you all, and I love Anthony too. I'd be happy if you'd be willing to move to this city. I remember you dreamed about it when I was in high school. You always dreamed of living in a big city, and now you have that opportunity. Please don't refuse. I'm not refusing, but we still need to think about it. I'm not saying you have to move here tomorrow. First, we have to find a suitable apartment. It's not that quick. Plus, we need to restore the documents and get married again. Of course, I'd like to get it all done before the baby is born. I hope that after turning from Zoe to Amelia, my sister will become a good housewife. Otherwise, her husband will really divorce her, Emma said suddenly. Everyone looked at the girl in confusion. What are you talking about? Amelia asked. We've been talking for over three hours, but you haven't even offered us tea. Sister, I'm hungry. Oh my goodness, you are right, Amelia realized and rushed to the kitchen. Bella immediately followed her into the kitchen. This joke improved the atmosphere at home, and when everyone started to have tea and snacks, they began to discuss the idea of buying an apartment and moving. The parents and sister stayed the night at Anthony and Amelia's apartment, and the next day, they went home to restore her identity papers and explain the sudden resurrection of their daughter to everyone. Meanwhile, Anthony started looking for a suitable apartment to buy. It took almost six months to solve all the issues, but by Maria's birth, everything was done. Amelia managed to restore her identity and officially married her beloved man, and her parents moved to a new apartment not far from Amelia's building. After all, they wanted so much to enjoy every minute of communication with their daughter, whom they had never dreamed of seeing again. And Bella, who finally found her beloved owner, became the most beautiful dog again. She never left Amelia's side, and then the baby's side, and guarded her constantly when Maria slept in her crib, 